Hello, Kongsdorm. Hello, Juan. This is Germany. We are filming live today out of our studios here at the EPC GmbH. My session, Best Practice to Adopt Microsoft Teams at SAD Customers. And the show is about to begin right now. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Commsverse session 319 with Alex Eggers talking best practice to adopt teams at small and medium sized business customers. Alex, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. Welcome here in our gym video studio. And uh, I have the pleasure to have also a session here at Comsworth. And as you may notice, English is not my native language. So I'm sorry for um, maybe find, not finding the right words uh, exactly. So I just want to describe uh, then what I want to tell you. And today we have also the all the sponsors and we have to acknowledge that it's really cool. You have all uh, sponsoring this event, so I'm very happy to uh, present all these uh, sponsors here too. Um, next, we will have a look at our uh, agenda and what we want to talk today. And uh, it's about how to adapt teams at smaller customers and because I think there's a specialty um, to adapt this. We cannot use our all our main processes we use in um, enterprise companies. We also have a special look on this smaller companies because um, they have some specialties and here I am with the first uh, session. Why is it different to enterprise? And we, we nearly start now with this. Um, first of all, Smaller companies, uh, when I say is about 50 or 100 employees or maybe 150 employees, so very small companies um, we have here to adopt teams. And the main difference is that we have less software solutions in this, these companies than we have in enterprise companies. They are used to use uh, one or two or three software solutions and, and mainly also not so many collaboration solutions they use. Um, so the technical development is, is also missing. That's a shame because uh, maybe the administrators are not so um, far uh, adopting teams or maybe other technology um, developments. And um, we have the smaller offices and in smaller offices, as you may know, it's also much easier to just walk over to the other person than to use a video conference call or something like that um, or to collaborate. They just go in the same room because uh, the companies are not so big. And maybe it's also that they have a less pressure to invent their uh, company uh, structure, their solutions for software, for collaboration, of course. COVID-19 has a difference on this because on COVID-19 we have um, this, the, the thing that also the smaller companies need to use home office and uh, are not in the same office uh, at the same time. So here's also a big uh, uh, change on using Teams, of course, but we have a look on all of this. Uh, also accepting COVID-19 uh, the time before and maybe the time after. We will have to see uh, how this changes in the future for smaller companies. As we have seen right now, many companies also in Germany uh, call back their employees in the company. So home office is not maybe the thing that's uh, the future for, for smaller companies. We will see. So this is the main difference in smaller companies, not so many software solutions, not so many collaboration solutions. So it's more new to them to have a, a, a special software for this. And um, then Teams comes around the corner, as I may say, and uh, why is this so? So when we have a look at this, it's uh, often what I see is that a boss is uh, maybe influencing or gets influenced by another boss 
and they're playing on the golf course and the one says to the other, hey, uh, we are using Teams now, it's pretty cool. And then the other boss says, okay, we, we also need this. And he comes to his company and says, we, we want to implement Teams. And and they don't know what's all about it. It's, it's just because he heard that this might be a cool software solution. Or maybe we have some interested employees, um, the early adopters uh, who um, are open for new solutions. And uh, so they trigger this, this part of teams in the company. Or what I've also seen, the customers from this company uh, want to use teams to collaborate with the company. And um, so the company is uh, has a pressure now to use teams uh, whether maybe they don't know what the software is for, just because their customer want them to use it. So what's all in common on these three points is that only a small group of people know the advantages of using Teams. All the others maybe haven't heard it before, or maybe they have heard it before, but maybe they know, think it's a, it's a video collaboration tool and or a video conferencing tool. And so they don't know the whole part of Teams. So this is also a problem. And you really know this uh, chart, it's just about lose, leaving your comfort zone. Yeah? When you hear about uh, new solutions, maybe hear about um, new digitization solutions in your company, the people begin to, they have to leave their comfort zone because they are changing things. And this change um, ends up in, in the worry and uncertainty uh, um, part, or maybe also on the risk flight part, where we will talk about fluctuation and active resistance. So leaving the comfort zone is always not so good. And we have to um, struggle with it, and we have to implement uh, workshops where we can drive them very fast back in the in the comfort zone so they feel uh, pretty good and better with this new solution. So this is the part we have to go through. And uh, resistance in SMB is special. Why? Because in bigger companies you have many, many groups, but in smaller companies you have less groups. Less groups means that maybe one or two employees can act as a ringleader. Yeah, they all sit together in the in the canteen um, for lunchtime, and one or two are against this solution. They have resistance um, and fear about it, and they talk to the others, and maybe they influence them much faster in a smaller company than this could be in a bigger company, because they cannot influence the whole company. And so this is one of the main points that we have to have a look on. I, I know this is a black sheep is not so such a nice view on this, uh, but it's just how to show that maybe one person or two can influence much faster the the driving the adoption in the company because um, all the others uh, listen to these people. Uh, maybe they have a good standing in the company, so they even more listen to the people. Okay. So um, this was the first part. Why is there a difference from enterprise to smaller companies? And uh, the thing is, what is the, the solution for this? So what can we do to have a successful change also in smaller companies? And I uh, will show you here my five tips around it. First of all, start with the why. I know uh, everybody of you who have uh, knowledge about change management, I think you will know that starting with the why is always a good thing because when you don't know why we're doing something, um, the impact on how to use it or how effectively you use it will be uh, low. So starting with the why, like Simon Sinek says, is really important. And also, the next thing is just like the desire in the ATCA model for change management is what's in for me. So um, what is the, um, the possibility for me, for the person who wants to use or who has to use maybe a new solution, what can be solved with this solution? So um, that's a question we have to answer and what's in for me, for the person. And the next thing, what I've experienced good um, uh, solution is find the people who enjoy higher reputation. As I already told you, these people with high reputation in a smaller group, um, all the others listen more to this person. And um, it's very good to have this people with high reputation in your champions team to identify who is uh, the person who can influence all the others 
So um, I think this is a very good thing to have a lo look on who might be a good person in the champions team later. I come to the champions in the next slides. Um, so find the right persons who can uh, drive this adoption better. Change needs room. Um, I always tell the people that you uh, may not uh, expect that uh, when you introduce teams, everyone uh, uh, shouts out, you finally we have a new solution. So they also have uh, farewell and you need to leave the room for farewell because they are they're leaving their comfort zone and they um, need to talk about this. And um, so one of the, the main points is listen and then you will be listened to. So uh, hear what the people want to say, uh, why they are so sad because of this new solution and maybe uh, you can influence them uh, with this, uh, with the main points, what's in for me. So maybe they get a better chance uh, to adopt this solution. And also they just talked about it why they are so uh, sad or angry with this. Um, this also helps the people to get to the next step. You know? And uh, the last thing is uh, set milestones and celebrate success. I think this is also a very uh, interesting and really uh, important part because um, they in smaller companies, they forget to set milestones. It's just, okay, we have the daily business and now we have a new software. Come on, go with it and hurry on. We have our daily business. So I, what I always expect to the company leader is Let's have special times, milestones where we can have a look at it. Where are we standing now? What have what has done very good? We are also doing this in enterprise companies, of course, uh, but in smaller companies, they more often forget about this because they are not used to and celebrate success. I think this is also a very important thing to uh, talk about. OK, these are my five tips around successful change and how do we do this now? We have about three main workshops that we are doing. We have, first of all, the BDM, the business decision maker uh, workshop with a pilot or a pilot team, but especially in smaller company, it's the BDM workshop. Then we have the adoption team and the champions where we talk about and we have the user, not Schulung, it's the German word, it's a uh, well, you cannot read it, it doesn't matter. It's a user training, uh, what we have in the third workshop, what we will talk about. And we have, of course, extra workshops um, like uh, add-on workshops, use case shopping, process analysis, exe exe executives enabling and collaboration workshops. But these are not the main workshops we have in smaller companies because just uh, also the budget is not so big that we can do all these workshops. But the first three we have are the main workshops and they are always the same in the same row. Just uh, we have a specialty how to look. Uh, did this company already have teams uh, in usage or not? Are they starting uh, with zero? We have to see. OK. Um, workshop number one is the decision maker workshop. Um, we have a look at it. Um, so we have here the executive, the managing directors or the team leaders who are in this workshop, uh, it's up to 100 employees. I think you have 10 to 15 people um, in this workshop maybe. In smaller companies, less than 20 people, uh, just put everybody in this workshop. Doesn't doesn't matter if the just uh, how big is the uh, the room where you can uh, do this training, or maybe you do it uh, via via webinar. Uh, but we have to um, have these people, these executives, the team leaders, in one room, and we are talking about teams and um, how we can implement it. And this is the agenda for this workshop number one. And as you may see, we have. Uh, a structure like the ATCA model uh, in, in um, change management. You can see it here. We have awareness, desire, and knowledge, and ability. This is maybe a four or five hour workshop we are doing, and we're starting with awareness. The cultural change. We have to explain to the people and obviously to the leadership people, to the, the team leaders and the, the um, CEOs, that why are we doing this why are we talking about teams? And uh, I always think there are two main uh, um, things. First of all, next to COVID-19, of course. But first of all, it is uh, that we have um, the Generation Z that is coming in the companies. Uh, in their digital life, 
they are more um, expecting uh, how to use technology. Well, uh, what I always say is, how do you want to introduce your company to a 16 year old teenager that he has to use a keyboard, a mouse and a desk table, to uh, table desk telephone when this 16 year old teenager only knows how to use a touch screen and uh, voice recognition. So there are so many differences, uh, diff differences in this uh, expectation how to use technology. So it's very important for the people, for the CEOs, for the executives that they know they are coming younger ones who have a different approach on using this. So this is the first and the second is that we have more building in teams. Uh, I don't I don't have to tell you, you already know this, but uh, this is the cultural change where we have a focus on in the first thing and the way awareness, the why are we doing this? And the second is desire. So we have to be talking about basic in teams. What is the idea of teams? What is about email? So they can uh, have a look at it and they maybe get the desire to, to uh, be in this part of this change because they have pain points they maybe get solved with uh, with the solution and the third is we're talking about knowledge it's about a live demo uh, what we are doing okay no deep dive of course but just to show them how teams is working and the next thing is that we have the ability so the self-testing they get a demo tenant and they should use it on their own um, why is this so important because the main thing of this workshop is the third the important part is the brainstorming. And the brainstorming is where everybody, when he has heard the three hours uh, about teams and the possibilities, that they have something in their mind. When they, when they listen, they, they have something in their mind when they say, okay, in my department, this could also be cool because my pain point is something like this or that. Uh, we, we have to, uh, oh, I, I don't need to tell you what the pain points are, but, you know them and we want to fetch these pain points because they are all together in this room right now. When they leave the room, they will forget what they have seen and they don't remember it one week later. So we take this chance in the workshop right now and we ask them, so what is your use case when you think about what, what I've just shown you? And we're making a, a bigger part of uh, Overview, there's a mind map. Uh, you may not read or you cannot read it. it it's, it's not possible, it's not the problem because you don't have to read it. It's just from one customer. customer. It's just that we want to show what, what many possibilities we uh, can uh, get in this workshop right now in this brainstorming. This is really cool because we can use it in the next uh, workshop, what is coming then, um, where we talk about the champions. So this is the first part of the, the workshop. So every executive and team member or team leader is um, has a, this change in of mind um, and he knows what will come. So the next thing is then we have a look at the champions workshop, the workshop number two. Um, and this champions workshop, of course, we uh, try to fetch all the people, the attendees uh, or the, the um, employees who are willing and interested and open for teams and open for new things. Um, we have to put them together in a group and Microsoft calls this champions group. Or, um, there are so different names we can use, but uh, we, we just take the, the champions uh, team and we put them together, it's maybe three or four or five people, not more, uh, but they have some things to do. And first of all, they have to be, uh, um, they, get, they need to get more information about Teams. Maybe they have not used it so often. So uh, when they want to do, or when they have to do support for the other employees in the company, they need a more deep dive on Teams. So we have this workshop number two, and it's all about basic in Teams. What's the idea of Teams? What about email? Um, it's it's mainly the same in, uh, as in workshop number one, but um, usually the employees are not the team leaders or not the executives. So this is a, a new kind of group. So we can um, uh, do this uh, workshop once more. It's also it's basic in teams, live demo, self testing. That's the same, but the difference is then at the end we take the mind map we have done in our workshop number one. And we'll find five main teams to start with. So I think this is really important because when we're starting with teams, we cannot uh, start with zero teams. 
um, uh, when we have the user uh, trainings. So we need to f identify five, maybe five, four to six main teams where we want to start with. And these teams may not be critical business processes. I always recognize that uh, we are in the workshop and then the, the tr um, uh, team leaders, they say, oh, this is pretty cool teams. We can do our whole process, uh, what we have from the start, from the beginning over uh, uh, implementing and then uh, whatever comes after this. For all departments, we have one big thing for our customer in teams. And I think this is not so good. We should not start with a business critical process because when this not works, uh, you have a problem. So we need different processes. Um, and these five are the base for the commitments for the user trainings. So we have to identify these in workshop number two. How could this look like? Um, I've uh, my, uh, brought to you uh, two uh, examples. What are not business critical processes? And as you can see here, we have um, uh, a printer return list or a, a return list of hardware. This was a system house uh, IT company. And they um, had the problem that they s uh, sold uh, technical equipment and this are sometimes special things, especially for this customer. And then the customer says, no, I don't want to have this. It doesn't work like I thought. And because it's a good customer, they have to take back this uh, technical stuff. And it's now then in their, um, in their company and they have to sell it. And in former times, it was so that one person was responsible for this uh, technique stuff that comes back to the company. And uh, then he tells via an Excel list, uh, the um, salesperson, okay, this is the, the things we have in stock that need to be sold. Um, and because these are special things, the uh, salesperson don't even know what it is because in this Excel list, they cannot see it very good. So what we have done, we have built up a Teams team uh, where we have, um, first of all, this um, in stock list, as the person before just uh, sent out per email once a month. This is the email what the salesperson um, first of all just uh, deleted when they saw this because they don't know what's in there. So we have uh, a list here and it's always the actual list of course because we only have this one list and the person can do photos and print them here in the, in the um, conversation tab. So the salesperson even better know what, what a product is this. No, okay, so this is a, a very easy process. It's not business critical, but it's just making it better and it's easy to understand. The second thing is maybe for smaller companies is onboarding from new employees. Uh, it's just like in welcome a Teams team. We see here it's a nice message. Uh, welcome to our company. And what we also have in here is maybe something like a trainings plan, depending on which um, department are you, you are in. And also what I think is really nice is uh, just put some photos or maybe you have a PDF um, with all your staff. Uh, the names. So when a new person comes in the company, he can see the name and of course the, the picture so he knows who, who is who. I don't want to tell you this process. I just want to show you this is a very easy process you can implement in the start because it's not business critical. Okay, so um, next thing is then the workshop where we are talking to the user and we have uh, committed us on five main points and main, five main teams. And this user training will be about one and a half hour or two hours and where we show the basic in teams and, and, we, and we talk about the commitment to start with these five main teams just to encourage the people to use it and also to see how the usage um, is, is in the start. Of course, in later part, we are doing more on this. Uh, we can see here in the department of the workshops. So we can use after the, the um, trainings, we can do use case shopping within the departments. So when they see how, what teams can do and when we see that uh, what uh, possibilities in teams are in, 
we go to the uh, department or maybe the champions go to the department and they try to find use cases they can implement in teams and they help the people to do this because maybe they're on their own they are not possible to implement this process because just in one and a half hour workshop or two hours is not enough um, to um, to have the ability to use teams exactly um, so starting um, then uh, to use more teams in teams of course with the use cases there are so we're leaving this part with the five teams and we start using it more and more. And the next thing is that um, the, the business critical processes we always have in smaller companies from starting to the end. Then when everybody is fine with using teams, we can talk about starting processes for business uh, for business critical processes uh, where we come together with a represent uh, represents from all departments and then we create a new mind map and how this process could be in teams. But this is really uh, at the end of all what we're doing. What I also want to talk about, and I already heard it in other Comsworth sessions here, um, is when we talk about marketing. I think it's really important to have uh, an internal marketing on Microsoft Teams and uh, of the adoption of Microsoft Teams. And I just want to show you some pictures on how we're doing this. Uh, here you can see uh, the Champions team with the Champions t-shirts um, where we want to uh, engage them and they should have fun using this or making uh, uh, working in this group and so they get the special t-shirts or what we also use are these um, uh, special stickers uh, we also give all to all the users it's just to have more fun it's more emotional and emotional is very very important in uh, introducing this solution i think and of course, also we have something like emails. Uh, oh no, sorry. First of all, swag sites. This is the swag site for Microsoft. Um, I think it's not possible to find it on Google or somehow. Uh, you need to know this uh, domain and you can uh, buy here swags. Um, first of all, I have to say that they don't ship this to Europe, except you send them a UPS uh, sticker with a, and you take the travel costs and then they will send it to uh, Europe also. There are pretty cool things in here and uh, just have a look at swag site, mybrightsides.com. Okay, and what I want to tell you is all about the email templates. You can use the um, the teamwork assessment kit from Microsoft, uh, Google for it, and there are all these templates in. Of course, in English language, uh, we have translated some of them in German, um, just to not to have plain text when introducing Microsoft Teams for the um, uh, for the trainings, for the user trainings, or maybe to give some tips to the employees use uh, email templates or posters, uh, hang them out in the in the floor just to to show this positive aspect of Office 365 or of course of um, Teams. OK, so we come to the conclusion of all this. Uh, it's half an hour is over. This was the time for our session. Um, hold on in mind my five tips for successful change. Um, uh, maybe you get uh, the Comsworth ticket to see the recordings and then we can have a look once more at it. Find the right people for the change processes, of course. Uh, what I told you is find the, the people with, who have a big influence on, um, on the company's employees. This is a really good uh, help here and uh, structure the SMB change process more compact. Uh, it, it must be faster, um, but uh, of course uh, the same thing as good as for the enterprise, but just a little bit faster, but a little bit compressed. Okay, this was my session um, 319 on uh, Comsverse. I, it was a pleasure to have you here. Um, and here are my credentials. Let's just, oh, you cannot use the QR code. It's uh, out of the window, so forget about it. It's just follow me on LinkedIn. I'm publishing also English content and writing is much better than speaking. So follow me on LinkedIn and uh, see all about uh, Microsoft Teams. And yeah, this was it. And I would like to have you on um, rating the se session um, when you uh, uh, help us here. And of course, come to the breakout room. It's uh, go to teams.fans uh, BRK319, and you can talk to me directly after this when we are finished here. So, Adrian.
thank you very much. I give it to you back. Thank, thank you, Alex. That was great. Uh, so we don't actually have any questions at the moment, but I'll, uh, we'll, let's give it a moment just to see whether um, anyone decides to post anything now. I've um, I've just posted the link for the breakout session so that people can come and have a chat with you after the uh, after the session if they want to. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens with that. So I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll just add a comment, Alex. That actually that that swag site is amazingly helpful because the number of people who who do want some sort of Microsoft branded type swag for champions or for encouraging adoption is amazing. And it's really, really hard to get any information out of Microsoft staff seemingly. But just having the link to that way because that site will be amazingly helpful. It is, it is, because um, I also searched uh, very often for swags and you cannot find good shops. Uh, there's a different swag shop um, um, where you cannot find uh, stuff like this because this is really giveaways. Um, main thing is you have to uh, buy not one, uh, what I have, one of these. It's just you have to buy, uh, I don't know, 20 or 50 yeah. of these because it's merchandise material. Yeah, So giveaways, you have to buy more than one, but it's no problem, I think. It's just a good store where you can buy these uh, things and not to do it on your own. Um, maybe I think you you are not allowed to do it on your own. So, um, <laughs> so uh, think about this uh, shop is really, really nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. uh, so, something I'm going to be looking for for our champions at my, my workplace because uh, we've got some pin badges we give to people which are amazingly popular and when people see them it's always oh how do you get one of those um, and people wear them on their lanyards or on their you know their jackets or whatever yeah. and that really helps with identifying people but it would be really great to be able to give them something like a drink cup or something that you know that spells out that they're a they're a champion at the place of work where I am and also that they've got an understanding around teams or whatever it happens to be so yeah Okay, Erin, pretty okay. cool. You have any questions? So we go to the breakout room. Yep, so um, I will let you all go. Um, I'll end the session and um, the breakout room link is, is in the announcements for everybody. So uh, have a good day and enjoy the rest of Commsverse, everyone. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, goodbye. Have a great day at Commsverse. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.